the very basics of the digital camera, uh, where your batteries are, where your card is, and how to get it in and out, uh, the real simple stuff. So. So, the digital SLR. Um, most of you are gonna be using a digital digital SLR that's similar to this one. Um, this is a Canon. It is an EOS Rebel T3, uh, which is mid-century, I guess. Um, the first EOS Rebel was, of course, the TI, T1, and now we're getting up to eight. The sevens are for sale right now. The eights are on their way. So, uh, so it's a middle-of-the-road camera here. It's one that we rent. So whether you're using a Nikon or a Sony or whatever brand you've got, Pentax, Olympus, they all pretty well may work the same way. It's just that the buttons are in different places. Um, I'm not a pro enough of all of them to show you where all the buttons are. I'm a Canon pro myself. So uh, I'm gonna demonstrate through a Canon, but they all basically work the same way. So most important thing, of course, is to have some kind of protection. Um, this camera does not have any kind of protection. Um, it does not have a lens on the front. Um, it's nice to buy a UV filter. It does not affect the, the image quality at all. Um, to put something on your lens, because if you smash this and break this, uh, there goes the lens. You don't have it anymore. Lens cap, of course, is a nice thing, too. Um, if you have other lenses to remove your lens, you'll see here that there's a button. You press that button, and I'm gonna put my camera down. You uh, press the button, hopefully, nope, and rotate the lens. You guys can see that, but you rotate the lens, and off it comes. And this is an incredibly important place to not have dust or fingerprints or any kind of grease because it is going to be in your image no matter what. Sometimes you can get away with a little bit of smudge and dirt up here, sometimes, um, but not often. Um, and that's only because um, when it gets, the, there's a whole bunch of lenses within the lens that are reducing the outside world, the big, huge outside world that you're shooting. It's reducing it and reducing it and reducing it and smaller and smaller and smaller so that it will fit on to the sensor that is behind the mirror Oops, should have put it on bulb, but you saw it real quick. The sensor is right there. You saw the little flash. So we're reducing the outside world smaller and smaller and smaller to fit onto that sensor. So there's lots of lenses in between. So that's why if you have a smudge or a piece of dirt or some, some specks back here, it is going to show up and it's gonna show up huge, right? So you wanna make sure the back of your lens is clean. And the easiest way to keep make sure that the back of the lens is clean is to just keep the lens on the camera. So how do I put, the, put it back on? There's that little white dot right here. I line that up with the little white dot and twist. I'm gonna have to put you down again because I'm using my phone that doesn't have a tripod. Quality filmmaking. All right, so this camera also has what's called a zoom lens. So if you look at it right here, you'll see that it goes from 18 millimeters to 55 millimeters and as I as I rotate through you see that the lens moves right so this has nothing to do with aperture or shutter speeds that we're going to get into later it has everything to do with distance right so 18 millimeters is going to see a little bit wider than the normal human eye so it'll see a little bit of what you would see in your peripherals of your naked eye where 55 is gonna zoom in a little bit and allow you to get a little bit closer, not hugely closer, but a little bit closer to, to those things that are farther away. If you really wanna get close, you need like a 200 or a 300 millimeter. And all these numbers mean are focal length, the length of the lens, how far it can see. And notice that the lens is moving in and out as I move, and that's adjusting the focal length. The focal length is, the point of focus out in, out in the world, the point of focus to the film plane, or in this case, the sensor plane. We don't use film anymore, so the sensor plane. All right, so that's a little bit of in-depth stuff that we'll get into a little bit later, but the most important things to know when beginning are, where's your on-off switch? Here. Some, computer, some computers, some cameras, it might be down here, depending on what model you have. Some, it could even be on this side by itself, but where's your on-off? button. Got it right here. We are going to be shooting in manual mode always. The other modes are aperture priority, shutter speed priority, 
program. And then we've got all these little presets here that we'll talk about more when we get into color. Um, when we get into color, because every time you choose a preset, different things happen. Um, the, you're telling the computer on the camera different things, and it's going to set the camera to do different things. And we don't want to do that right now. Well, we may never want to do it. I never use them. So we're going to shoot manual this semester. And the whole point of shooting manual is so you control aperture and shutter speed. So um, all digital cameras are basically the same, just the compartments are in different locations. Um, currently my camera is on, so I'm going to turn it off to do this because I'm going to remove the battery. So I'm going to turn it off. And most batteries are on the bottom. Um, sometimes they might be on um, the motor drive side, but usually they're on the bottom. And very simply, you just open it like so and pop it out with that button. And then hopefully you've got a charger. Um, you've got a charger to connect this into the wall. Every single time Canon or Nikon or Sony or anybody releases a new camera, they release a new battery and they release a new charging system, which drives me absolutely nuts. So every single camera has a different charger. Um, so you've got to make sure you have the right charger for your camera. And if you lose one, you can't just email me and say, hey, do you have a charger? Because I may not. If you have an XTI or a three, I might. But if you have anything else, I don't. And especially if it's an Icon Pentax, Sony, or anything else, I certainly do not because we only have Canons. Then you pop it back in. Now with this camera, it's SD card. It's compact SD card is in the same location. So if I press and pop, out it comes. So in this particular camera, it's in the same location. Many, many um, other cameras, um, older cameras especially, and even newer cameras, they keep moving this around too, just like they keep changing the battery, they keep moving this around too. And so sometimes it might be on the side here along with the, the cables that you connect, connect into it, um, but they're usually either in with the battery or on the side here. Um, it is this that you are going to take out and remove and put into a computer to get your images off of your your card so in the case of working in the computer lab here i am in the computer lab in on the back of the mac voila is a drive to pop this baby in um if you have a laptop you don't have this feature but you may be able to buy an adapter um, in which to do that but um, you, you may have to uh, make your way into the computer lab um, in order to transfer your images. And what I do is I actually transfer my images from this card. I don't like to keep things on here. You never know what could happen to this. Um, you could easily, I did this with a micro SD card, and a micro SD card in, um, in a video camera, in a GoPro, and I ejected it. It ejected the same way. You pressed it and it popped, and it popped and it flew out. And because it was like, you know, like, like, you know, like, where are my fingers? It was like, it was like this big. And it flew out into my living room, and I couldn't find it, I couldn't find it, I couldn't find it. And finally, one day when I was vacuuming the couch, I found it in between the cushions before I vacuumed it. So it is really easy to lose these. It is really easy for these things to break and corrupt. So what I always do is I pop it in the back of the machine and I transfer all my pictures to my hard drive. And then I use my hard drive for importing and exporting um, my images within Lightroom. And we'll get into that a little bit more when we get into Lightroom. But uh, most important thing, um, have some kind of backup to this in case anything happens to this. Um, I wouldn't count on this for absolutely everything. I would not keep everything on here. I would transfer it either to my computer. So if you have your own computer, you could take the images off of this, plug it into your computer, transfer it onto your computer, put it in your pictures folder, or transfer them to your hard drive, your external um, uh, transportable hard drive, uh, put them there. So again, um, in this case, SD card lives in the, in the battery compartment and turn it around. And again, some of you may live on the side. Now, some of you may be using something other than a Canon, or you might have an older Canon. Um, some, some of the Canons that we rent here are XTIs, and XTIs actually use just, just SD cards. Those are, that's a compact. Um, an SD card is this big. Right, and an SD card is on the side. You pop it out on the side and it's this big. We have camera readers. That's what this is, camera reader here. This is an SD card, you can see it all. Compact flash, sorry, SD card, 
compact SD card micro. This is the one that I sent flying through my living room. Micro SD card. So this is a card reader. It can read all three, three functions. So if you have um, a, uh, a camera that, uh, that uses one of the other three, we do have these readers because the, the computer only reads the compact. It doesn't read the regular SD or the micro. So we do have these available for your use. And then also another thing you can do is if you have a mini, a mini USB cord, which, oh wait, this is not a mini USB, but it looks just like this. Um, I grabbed the wrong cord. Uh, but if you have a mini USB cord, another thing you can do too, instead of taking your card out, is you'll notice on the side here of your camera, you've got a whole bunch of, uh, of outlets. And right there is a mini USB and, oh, look, would you even take the, the one that I have? I don't know what that's called. I don't know what kind of USB that's called, this guy. This guy here, it's got a name, but I don't know. Um, so that would actually fit in here too. But your mini USB will also transfer information from the camera and that way you don't have to remove your SD card. And for those of you who did rent a camera that has a uh, regular SD card, the big guy, I provided you with a cable in order to cable it in so you don't have to use this. But for those of you who, who happen to, to forget to bring your cable um, and, you, and you need to use one of these other formats, uh, it's here.